Children's Liturgy of the Word, this time for the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. All right, so let's get right to it. Many Father Michael's here with me, and we're going to talk something a little bit later about this vestment that he's wearing. Notice he has a rope around his waist, and then there's this white gown that he wears. And we'll talk a little bit about that. I'll show you mine and share with you a little bit about that vestment and how we use it. Let's get right, uh, let's talk about the, what he needs to wear for ordinary time, fifth Sunday. Do you remember the color? Of course you do, it was green, correct. And what was the first piece that we put on him? The stole, exactly that. So we put Father's stole on him, the sign of his priestly office. And the other part was his chasuble, excellent. And the green chasuble for celebrating Mass in ordinary time. And if you ever come to a Mass during the week, you'll see the same thing. He'll wear green during ordinary time, and then the other colors that we talk about during the other days that we celebrate Mass. So there we are. Let's go to the Gospel reading. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Well done. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. And may the message of this Holy Gospel be in my mind on my lips and in my heart. Well done. As soon as Jesus left the meeting place with James and John, they went to the home with Simon and Andrew. When they got there, Jesus was told that Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with fever. Jesus went to her. He took hold of her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she served them a meal. That evening after sunset, all who were sick or had demons in them were brought to Jesus. In fact, the whole town gathered around the door of the house. Jesus healed all kinds of terrible diseases and forced out a lot of demons. But the demons knew who he was and he did not let them speak. Very early the next morning, Jesus got up and went to a place where he could be alone and pray. Simon and the others started looking for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, we must go to the nearby towns so that I can tell the good news to those people. This is why I have come. Then Jesus went to Jewish meeting places everywhere in Galilee, where he preached and forced out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You did it. So, an interesting story about Jesus' life. Again, remember we talked about Gospels are the stories of what Jesus did in his life. The Gospels, the good news. And so this one, we hear about Jesus going to Peter, Simon Peter's mother-in-law, his wife's mom, and she was sick, and so he healed her. That is one of the most important things that Jesus did in the course of his ministry on earth. When he went around to all the places that he went to, he healed people. Because in the Old Testament of the Bible, there were prophecies, there were predictions that said that the Messiah, the Son of God, would come 
And part of it would be that he would heal people. He would make the deaf hear and the mute speak and all those types of things. So it's kind of important to realize that uh, Jesus healed people. And we hear later on that he went around and he healed people of all kinds of terrible diseases and he sent out demons. And we heard about demons last week too. But we still see this idea that Jesus heals. If you remember from Father's homily, if you heard it at Mass last week, Father talked about healing and our need for healing. And even Jesus said, we must go to nearby towns so that we can tell the good news. That's why I have come. And he did that. He went and healed people in all the nearby towns. So this idea of Jesus healing, I think is kind of important for us. Don't you? Because some of us have been sick. I know with the virus going around, many of you may have known someone, or maybe you got sick from that virus, or got sick from something else. And the medicines that we get help us to get better. And God gave doctors and scientists the intelligence that they could make those things that help us heal. So even now, God heals us in a lot of different ways. Jesus also can heal us through our prayer to him. We can ask Jesus, Lord, please heal me and make me well. Or we can pray for other people and over other people. Lord, please heal them and make them well. Don't ever be afraid to do that because that's what Jesus wants us to do. One other thing that Jesus told us is that we would do things that were even greater than he did. Wow, can you imagine that? If you prayed over someone and they were healed because of Jesus' power. That, that's just so awesome to think about. The other thing that we can think about with healing is that it's not just sickness, but it's also the troubles that we have when we're really, really worried about something. We call it anxiety and depression. Jesus can heal us of those things too. And when we pray for, when we're really sad, we can pray to Jesus to help us overcome that sadness, to overcome that anxiety, that worry that we have about things. When we're afraid of something, we don't have them in the winter very much, but in the summer, do you remember the big thunderstorms? Do you ever get scared of those? I don't ever get scared of them again because I know that Jesus can help protect me. Jesus can protect me from that. So I pray to Jesus and he helps me to overcome my fear. He heals me in that way. Okay, so there's our gospel. There's a little bit of th things to think about. Jesus healing us of all the various things that he can heal us of. So next I'll show you and talk to you a little bit about the vestments, the alb that Father has on underneath. So here we are. We're in St. Anne Church and we're here at the sacristy. The sacristy is the place where all the things for Mass are usually set up before we take them into the church to actually have Mass. And so you'll see folks working back here putting together the chalices and saboria and the purificators and the pall and the corporals that we talked about last week are all in here for the setup. The other thing that's in here are all the vestments for Father, the same ass, and the deacons. So when Father comes, he finds out what season we're in and he knows right now we're in ordinary time so he can pick his green vestments which are in here on hangers. Now you may have noticed and I pointed it out earlier that father was wearing a white robe and that white robe is called an alb. A-L-B, alb. And you'll also notice that the deacon wears it and the servers wear it. The other thing that Father has 
is a rope called a cincture. It's kind of a fancy name, but the cincture is what kind of holds the owl in place around his waist. I won't get it off, we'll just kind of keep it all nice and neat here. The other thing that I'll wear usually when I'm wearing my owl is something called an amos. The amos is a little thing that goes around my neck and covers up, up through here, and then the owl will go over the top and cover everything up. So what is the purpose of all that? Well, the purpose of it is that the owl and all the other undervestments cover up the regular clothes that I'm wearing. So that when you see me ready for mass, we look, and Father as well, we look like ministers. We are ministers for the mass. Just like the servers wear owls that cover up their regular clothing, they wear a cincture as well. And it's tied around the waist. And they usually wear a color that matches the liturgical color for the week. So right now, if you watch the servers, they're wearing green. So there's a great thing. So what the owl does, the owl and the, the uh, amos and then the cincture all come together to help cover up the regular clothes that father is wearing or that I am wearing or that the servers are wearing so that we are seen as ministers in the church. Now, we also talked a lot about Father and his stole. Remember, Father's stole goes around his neck and hangs down the front like this. The deacon stoles, if you've noticed, are a little bit different. And I've got my green deacon stole for wearing for ordinary time. And when I wear a stole, it goes over my left shoulder and hangs around to my right side. That's the difference between the priest and the deacon. And so when we wear this, we can you can tell the difference between the priest and the deacon by what his stole looks like. And again, we have different colors for the different seasons. I just happen to keep my red one with my green one when I store it on the hanger. Now the deacon vestment that the deacon wears is not chasuble like father wears. It's called a dalmatic. And the dalmatic, the difference between the chasuble and the dalmatic is my dalmatic has sleeves on it. So when I, if I were to put my arms out like this, you could see the sleeves that come back and go to the main body of the vestment. The chasuble has no sleeves. It's just a big piece of cloth with a hole in it that goes over Father's head, and he wears it over his stole and owl and everything. So now you have a little bit of insight into some of the things that the deacon wears at Mass and that the priest and the servers also wear in the form of the owl and the cincture. I hope that was interesting. I, I enjoy, just love to share all this stuff with you so that you have more knowledge of what we do in church and some of the little things that maybe no one else knows about. So I encourage you to share the things that we learn together with other people. And now it's time for the blessing. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Nicely done. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he look upon you with kindness and bring you peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Nice. So, again, thank you for being with me today. I look forward to seeing you in church. Make sure you come and see me and say hi. Tell me that you've watched the video so that I know who's doing it. I would sure love to know. And stay safe and stay healthy, and let's get together again next week. Bye.